Thanks for joining me. This is Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 89. Don't give up. Just fight. Fight for what you love. And you can accomplish many things. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire. And you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped. And now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, I'm Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick and mortar store, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. And today I have joining us Myrea Esquivel. She is a certified balloon artist and a master certified party decorator. She's been working in the balloon industry for seven years and received her certification a couple of years ago in 2014. Maria recently started her home-based business and is working full-time doing balloon decor. I ran into Maria at the America's Baking and Sweets show. She was selected to do the decor for the show and it caught my eye. So after talking with her, I knew I wanted to have her on this podcast, and that is why we're getting an opportunity to talk with her today. Welcome to the show, Maria. Hi, Sue. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm great, and I am thrilled that we were able to make this work right around the holidays, too. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's kind of busy, but hey, it's going to be fun. As our listeners know, we like to learn something more about you in a different way, and that is by having you describe your motivational candle. So if you were to help us envision what that would look like, what color and what would be the quote on your candle? My candle color would be blue. I love color blue. It makes me feel great when I have it on. Is it navy blue or royal or light blue? What color? What shade? Royal blue. Royal. Okay. Yeah, royal blue. I think it's a wonderful color. And uh, someone there to me, he asked me to research what the color means. And I was looking at the color. It says the blue is the color of the sky and the sea. It symbolizes trust, loyalty, wisdom, confidence. And all these things, it talked to me because I'm loyal. I don't want to sound considered or anything like that, but people tend to trust me and I have a lot of friends that they can count on me. So the blue, it really represents me. So that will be my color. And my motivational quote, it's put your heart, mind, and soul, even into the smallest act. That is the secret of success. Do you use that with your balloon and your decor company? Yes, I always do it. You know, everything that I do, I try to do the best that I can. And every decorations that I do, every event, I put my heart on it and my soul because this is something that I love to do. I want my staff to reflect everything that I do and everything that I love in every decoration that I do. Well, I saw that at the show because I remember the show was already up and you had the balloons all over. I mean, she had gift biz listeners. She had like tiers, like towers of balloons, kind of like almost lamp posts. And then she had wall art of balloons. I mean, there were just balloons everywhere. It was beautiful. And I remember one morning, so this was after the show had already started, I saw you, I don't know if you were fixing one of the displays or you were making another one, but you could just tell the dedication and the time you were putting in. Yeah, I was actually fixing it because some of the balloons, you know, tends to deflate or something. So I wanted to stay there. They gave me the opportunity to stay in the show, put a booth or just come back and walk around. So I decided to stay because I wanted to everything to look perfect. And when I was walking around, I saw some of the balloons deflated. So I decided to fix them right away before the people starts coming. And, you know, I want them to see something nice, not something that they're going to see deflated and say, huh, there's another balloon right there. Yep. See, there's the example. <laughs> Putting in your heart, mind, and soul, right, into all, yes. every little thing. Perfect. Yeah, even the smallest acts. Yeah. All right, Maria, let's talk about how the whole balloon thing happened for you. What drew you initially to balloons and how did this idea of a business get started? Well, it was a long time ago. I learned about this balloon artist. He's from Texas. He does these amazing things. And I was looking at all his works in art because actually it's art what he does with balloons. 
And it was more than just the average, you know, you know, balloons taped to the wall like we used to. When we do parties, well, my family, they just tape balloons all over the wall. And that was the decorations with balloons that we knew. This man had these amazing uh, arrangements, bouquets, arches, and so on, that I was so amazed to see all these wonderful things that you could do with balloons. Where'd you see him? I saw him in a magazine that it's about balloons. It calls uh, Images. Okay. And he was there. And I just saw his pictures, and that's when I fell in love. I started to learn on my own because there was really no, not, no one giving classes or there wasn't a lot on YouTube like we always start. So I started trying to imitate what he was doing through the pictures. And then little by little, you know, here and there, I started doing blooms. Then I decorated for my 25th wedding anniversary. It was something simple. It wasn't the greatest. So were you doing it initially just because you wanted to make the decorations for family events more beautiful? Or were you already thinking within a business intent? I was just trying to do it for my family. Okay. You know, myself, my little kids about the, the time. So I continued to learn on my own. And then one day when my daughter turned 16, she asked me if I could decorate for her 16. And uh, I say yes. So I tried to practice and I practice a little bit more so everything could actually look nice and when I was while I was doing all these decorations that's the moment that it hits me you know I realized this is what I want to do this is what I love to do so I continued to educate myself and I began taking classes became a certified party decorator and that was only the beginning so when you were doing this for your daughter's sweet 16 what was it that you loved so much about the balloon decor we went into this, it's a little rental place, you know, where people have parties and whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't the greatest. So when I started, you know, putting uh, towers, balloons here and there, in the corners, on the ceilings, putting flowers, bouquets, and did an arch. And I saw how the place transformed. You know, it wasn't the average place anymore. I could see, like, wow, with the balloons, everything changes. It's not the same place. You know, it gives him a different feel, a different look. That's what it kind of grabbed me. And I was in awe because I was thinking, wow, you can do all these things. Imagine what you can do doing more than just this. This is a place, a small place. But if you put balloons, everything changes. And everybody loves balloons. I haven't met someone that doesn't love balloons. <laughs> well, <laughs> and you know, I don't know much about the craft, but I'm thinking that you have to do it all on premise, right? When you're decorating, you have to start with all the balloons deflated because there's no way you could bring everything in your car. Yes, we do it on site. And I drive a minivan, so when it's like a big job, I do inflate some of the balloons in my house. So my van is full of balloons. And the rest we do it outside because some venues, they only give you like two hours to decorate. And sometimes that's not enough time. Okay, so you can do a little bit beforehand, but most of it has to be done on site. So there's not a lot of room it's, for error, apparently. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, there's not. <laughs> no, no. All right, so you see that this is something that you're interested in. You like the fact and, you know, your whole point about that it, makes the room different, I would suggest that when you have a place that's festive and colorful, it sets the tone for the whole party. Because people come in and they're like, they've got the wow factor. It automatically puts a smile on their face and you're already set up to have a great event. Yes, they do. I had this little sweet 16. Actually, I was a quinceanera for one of my friends' daughter. And when she went into, you know, after she had her ceremony and she got into the ballroom, she had literally started crying, and uh, it was her moment, right? <laughs> the camera was on her, but she forget about everything else, and she ran to me, she hugged me, and she was like, oh, my God, thank you so much. This looks amazing. I couldn't believe it. And she was just there crying, her makeup running down, and I'm like, sweetie, I did it for you. You know, I love you. She's my best friend's daughter. It is a wonderful feeling when you see people and then out when they go into a room and they see transform because of all the balloons and they never thought you can do the things that we do with balloons. It's not just balloons taped to the wall anymore. It's times like that that really ground what you're doing and make you feel so happy about it. 
Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing feeling. <laughs> I want to continue on with your story. So you saw that this was something that you wanted to do, and you looked and followed and started training yourself. At what point did you decide, and why did you decide that you needed to be certified? After a few years, and I started doing that, I learned about the Certified Balloon the Artist Certification. And that's given by the company Qualitex. And I saw that with that certification, you know, it opened doors to you because it's something that is prestigious. I noticed that people will ask me, do you have any kind of certificates or uh, educations or something like that so you can do this job? What certifies you to do this job? Because I was a certified party decorator, but not a balloon artist. Party decorator is a totally different thing from a balloon artist. So... There was this company that they wanted me to do this job, and they say, are you certified to be a balloon artist? And I'm like, not really. I'm not understanding what you're asking me. So they actually, this company explained me what a balloon artist was. It wasn't a balloon decorator. It wasn't the same thing. So they told me, you know what? I'm going to give you this job. Look into it. Then we continue working with you. I went into Google, of course. Everybody goes into Google. <laughs> and, I, and I found out what a certified balloon artist was. I took the training. It took me three months to complete it. Then I, I took my test. It's a four hours long test. It's kind of difficult. It asks you a lot of questions. It talks about our business. It talks about finances. It's not only just balloons. Oh, interesting. Rules about the industry, how to use helium. The laws that there, there's a law about balloons. <laughs> you know, there's some different things that people don't think about that. So that's when I decided, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it the right way. Because that's what I believe. If you're going to do something, do it right or don't do it. Right. So I told my husband that I was going to get the certificate, that I was going to become a balloon artist. And from there, you know, I continued my certification. I passed the test, thank God, and uh, everything from there has been a roller coaster. It's been great. Wonderful. So I like the fact that you're talking about, I mean, you were going to make it a serious business. I mean, you could think balloons are so lighthearted and fun. I would have never considered some of the things that you just talked about here in terms of certified balloon artists. Part of that is the business side, but legalities behind balloons and, of course, helium, I would have never considered. And I'm sure some of the events that you're doing, like the America's Baking and Sweets show, you had to have that type of a certification to even work one of those shows. Yes, you do, actually, because I say I have my own business. You know, I have all my license. I have to have insurance. Right. I work as insurance, personal insurance. You know, I have to have all my license in, in order and there's laws, like I was saying, that I have to know, I have to follow, because if something happens, that will come against me. The good thing about the baking and pastry, they didn't ask me for any helium, which it was good. But when you have to work with helium, you know, that's a totally different thing. How to handle the tank, you know, how to handle the bulb, how to put it in a safe place, how to not let people play with it, with that. Explain them that the helium is not for you to inhale because it's a very dangerous thing. There's laws about how to tie the balloons. There's so many different things that I could never imagine what I got myself into it. But now that I know about it, I just love it. I love balloons. I love working with balloons. I love everything that has to do with balloons. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. All right. So you actually formed your business a couple of years ago, you were working with balloons for seven years and you started your business how long ago? My business is going to be two years, but I was working like full time or maybe just getting paid actually for balloons. It's going to be four and a half years. Okay. All right. And I did that with friends and family. At the beginning, I started with my family, which of course it was free. Then I decided I'm going to start charging because material costs. So about four years and a half, you know, I actually started uh, letting people know that I was doing balloon decorations. And it's good that you started with your family because that way you could perfect what you were doing. You could practice, perfect everything, so that then as you started advancing towards having a business where you're actually going to charge people, you knew then that the end result, the product was going to be good because you'd been doing it then for a while. Yeah, and you know, your family is going to tell you something's wrong. At least my family will tell you. <laughs> that is crooked. 
that doesn't look nice. I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> you know, my family would tell you in a good way. They're there to support me and they would tell me, you know what, I don't think I know, I don't like it like that. What about this? Even though they don't know anything about balloons, sometimes, you know, they come and tell me little tips. At the moment, I'm like, what do you know about balloons? But after I think about it and I look at it and I'm like, you know what, they were right. So right. that's what I started with my family because they would tell me the truth. They would tell me what is right or what is wrong or if it looks nice or the color is off. That's a great thing of having a family that right. would tell you straight out, you're wrong. So you've been in business for a short time, really, you know, two years, yes. four years, that type of thing. What do you know now that you didn't know before? What kind of challenge have you had that you weren't expecting? Wow. <laughs> Those challenges. There's been a few. I mean, there are always going to be challenges. But at the beginning, uh, first of all, trying to get all my license. That was something that I didn't expect. I live in a town of Cicero. So they have different rules in the city. And they ask for many requirements. Many little papers here, sign here, sign there. How did you go about finding what type of paperwork and documents you needed to have? I had to go to my town hall and I just told them what I wanted to do. And they actually, they told me, you know, you have to fill these forms. You need to get into the internet. You need to file a permit for the state, for the city, everything, you know, the insurance. They actually gave me a list. Perfect. Okay. They were helpful, but they have a strict laws here. So give biz listeners, if you are at a point where you are looking at starting a business, then the city might be the best place to go. You know, just go there and tell them what you're planning on doing and they may be able to direct you to all the forms that you might need for whatever it is you're planning on going into business for. Obviously, the balloon industry is different than if you're going to start making cupcakes, than if you're opening a brick and mortar shop. Everything is different from one another. And no matter what, you need state forms and federal forms, but the city is a great place to start. So good point there, Maria. Thank you for talking about that. What other challenges did you encounter? And I have to own my own name or my company's name that is round like me. I got to make sure that nobody has that name. So I had to put ads on the papers. My challenge and my difficulty at the beginning, it was all the money that I was investing that I wasn't planning on, you know, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to open a home-based business. I don't think they're going to ask too much. Maybe a few forms here and there, but then they told me, you know, the name of your company. So when I came out with this, me and my daughter, we were joking around and they were saying about balloons. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? The balloons are round. And she's like, yes, I know that. And I told her they're round like me. So she started laughing. And that's how the name came out, you know, round like me. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. That's fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she also did my logo, which is a little doll, and the body is a balloon. It's a red balloon with a little head and just a stick legs, which is funny. And then I had a going to the newspaper, you know, post an ad, asking if somebody had the name. I had to wait for two weeks for that for someone to respond, which nobody did. Then I had to do uh, the copyrights for my logo. There's so many things that at the beginning, it was like a lot for me. And I was talking to my husband and I was telling, you know what? This is too much. I think I'm just going to let it be. Oh, dear. I never thought it was going to be hard. Because uh, to tell you the truth, this is like the first time that I actually work out of my home. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm at home. <laughs> so I never thought it was going to be all these papers and all these questions. And that's when the question started bugging me. What are you going to do about it? You know, are you going to be able to continue doing this? Do you have the skills to do all this because you're spending money? So all these questions and these things came to my mind all the time. Like You were saying this to yourself. Yes. You know, when I was filling up papers and when I had to do like payments and spend money on something, the first thing that came to my mind is, do you have the skill to do it? Can you handle this job? Those were my struggles. My struggles to start in my own company. Like, are you going to do it? Is it really, are you really that good? Are you really going to, you know, when you start hearing voices in your, in your head, all these questions came to me. So I had to talk to my husband and we sit down, we talk about it and, 
he started talking to me and telling me, you know what, this is something you love. Let's finish all this. You know, you started doing all the paperwork. Let's just finish it. Whatever it takes. Is this what you really want? He told me, you know, let's pray about it. Let's do what we can. And the rest, you just leave it in God's hands and uh, let's see what it comes out. So thank God I listened to my husband, you know, we did all the paperwork. I did all the legal stuff that I had to do. I talked to my daughter and she said, if you need money, I'm here for you. So thank God, here I am. There you go. And this is a great story. And I want to underline two things that Maria is talking about. First off, we can be our own roadblock. You know, some people will call it the imposter syndrome. And sometime in our heads, we decide, who are we to think that we can be doing this? Or why should it be able to be me? And do I have the qualifications? And is this really something that can happen to me? And as long as we recognize that this is natural, even the biggest names you can think of out there get these imposter thoughts going in their mind. And as long as you realize, all right, it's going to happen. I'm just not listening to my own mind in this manner and carrying on. And this is a real big trigger point where a lot of people will stop. Just like Maria was saying, you know, maybe I won't be doing this. But luckily, and this is underline number two, she had support. She had her support in her husband who really believed in her. And then her daughter, who was there to back her up, probably just emotionally as well as financially, if you would have needed it. So two things that are really yes. important. And so I'm also talking to all of our listeners that if they're out there and they have an idea and they're starting to put things together and all of a sudden their mind starts saying to them, I don't know, I'm not so sure about you. I want anybody who's in that situation to ignore those comments and also make sure you have some type of support system, whether it's a friend, a family member, could even be people that you're meeting in your community in a networking group or somewhere. But you want someone who understands what you're trying to do, believes in you and supports you for those times when you get a little bit down or you start questioning yourself. Yes. Would you add anything to that, Maria? Yes. I just want to say something like, that you were saying right now, you know, when those questions are coming to your mind, ask yourself, because that's what I am always do. I'm still doing it. Am I going to give up or am I going to fight for what I love? I, then I decided to fight, you know. I decided to do what I can and the rest, I'm going to leave it to God's hands. My, my husband always says, you do what you can and the rest, let it in God's hands. I don't know if it's correct to talk about God or not, but <laughs> that's are my beliefs. You know, I tell the people, don't give up. Just fight. Fight for what you love. And you can accomplish many things. And take it from someone who has been struggling with those questions. And uh, I decided I'm going to fight for what I love. And I love balloons. So I'm fighting. I'm, I'm here. You're fighting for the balloons. <laughs> I'm fighting <laughs> for the balloons. That's right. <laughs> all right. Okay, so now, so you overcame that. You filled out all the paperwork. You got your name. And that's such a fun story about how your name <laughs> came to be. So now, how do you get your first customers? Uh, my first customers. Actually, it was one of the guys that went to my, sweet, uh, my, my daughter's sweet 16 party. It was this guy. I didn't know who it was. And I asked my daughter, who is that guy? He, she's like, I don't know, somebody, one of my friends invited him. And I don't know where he came from. The point is that this guy, he came to me like two years later. And he's like, you, I know you don't remember me, but I was at your daughter's sweet 16. And I want you to do a job for me. And I'm like, okay. So I started talking to him and I asked him, what do you have in mind? What is this about? He is the son of the owner of a store, a small store. And they were going to do like an anniversary celebration for the store. So he asked me to do some balloon marches and uh, some columns so the people would see the store. Something that would attract the store outside. Because mm -hmm. it was a very small store. So when he told me that he had a business and I'm like, hmm. And he asked me, do you have your license in order? I'm like, yes, I do. And he's like, great. That's all I need to know. So he was my actual real client. Was he your first customer my first customer uh -huh. it was my first and he's still my customer oh wow well that says a lot about your services and your design for sure repeat business tells you everything yes and then what happened from there 
from there, some people like everything else. You see something, you, you ask. Uh, people started asking who did these columns. People that went to the store, I left some of my business cards. And people started calling me from there. And they're like, you know, I saw your arch at the store. I would like something like that. Would you do something for a cathedral? Would you do something for a birthday party? Would you do something for a baptism? You know, this is my baby's first year. I want to do something special. What do you recommend? So people started calling me out of the sudden. And I'm like, wow. So I started getting clients like that. My business started growing. Then some uh, people from this phone company called me also if I wanted to do their decorations for certain events. And I started doing a little bit of corporate. I started doing a lot of personal parties, you know, all kind of events. We do from the smallest ones to the biggest ones. That's how my business is growing. I did my website. I've joined Facebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. Does social media play any role within your business? Yes, it does. It's a big influence, especially Facebook, because I have my business page on Facebook. I try to put all my pictures on my work. I try to keep it updated. And, you know, people always private message me. Can you do this for me? How much would this be? Can you do that? Or can you come? You know, the usual questions. And I do get a lot of clients through Facebook. That's wonderful. I like that you can say that there's a direct link. So you're posting photos and people are seeing them there and then contacting you to do some of their events. Yes. Yes, they do. And have you done any Facebook ads or is it all just posting? I did an ad for a class that I was giving because I'm also teaching balloon decorations. So when I decided to give a class, I do, I put it in Facebook and I do the advertising, the advertising Facebook for classes. Most of the time it's just classes. Got it. Leave my, my page like that and people just go in, because also my Facebook is linked to my actual personal Facebook. Right. So whenever I put something in my personal Facebook, you know, it's open for my friends, friends to see whatever, and they see something in my page, so they go to my Facebook page Facebook and from there they call me and it goes on and I like that. Right. Okay. Gift Biz listeners, a good point I just want to bring up in case you're not aware of this for Facebook. Okay. When you open a Facebook business account, it should be linked to your personal page. So you would have your personal page in Maria's case. Okay. Maria's page. And then connected to that would be a business page. The wrong way to do it is to open up another separate account that is called your business name, okay? Because then it's like a business name that's really a personal account. If you do that, a couple of things. Number one, you can't do any advertising if it's not a business page. So you can't do advertising on a personal account. Mm -hmm. Additionally, if you try and make posts on your personal account, so if you were to go on your personal account and do anything where you're suggesting monetary exchanges, that is against Facebook rules and your account could be shut down. So really important to understand the difference. So you have a personal account that's in your name as your real live name. And then if you're going to conduct business, you have a company page with the name of the company, which might also be your name, of course, but that's connected to your personal account just exactly the way Maria has set it up. So perfect. I'm, you know, just a side note for anybody who wasn't aware of that, because it is really important. I have heard of people getting their entire Facebook accounts shut down, which means any followings, anyone you've ever had is gone. Yeah, they look everything. Yeah. All right. Quickly, I did not know about the teaching. So I want to jump into this for just a (laughs) second. At what point did you identify and decide you were going to do teaching? And talk us through how that's going. Two, three years ago, there was this teacher that I went to her classes because she was giving a special class about balloons. She invited me the next year to help her teaching. She's like, you know what, I like the way you talk to people. Even though I was taking the class, people were ask, asking questions. And there was a lot of people in this class, so she didn't have the time to explain to other people what she meant with certain terms or little stuff like that. So then I was sitting around the people, and I like to help people. I like to share what I know. 
So I told them, if you don't mind, you know, I can kind of explain you what she meant with this. And I was trying to help people in the class, and she noticed. So she talked to me on the side, and I thought she was going to be mad or something. And she said, you know what? I like it that you're helping me in this class because there's a lot of people that I wasn't counting on. Then she asked me to join her the next year to teach the class. So I decided to go, and then she told me, you know what? I'm not coming back to Chicago. Why don't you teach the people that they want to learn? Because I'm not going to have the time. She gives classes in other states. She gave me the opportunity that if I wanted to teach, and I asked her, I don't know if I'll be able to it. And she's like, she told me, I saw you with the people. I saw you that you have the patience. I saw you how you handle it. You can teach people. And from there, she, t- she told them, one of the ladies, it was the last day of class, and she didn't know anything. And she's like, look, I cannot help you anymore, but get in touch with her. She will help you. And then she told some other friends, and some other friends posted pictures that I was giving classes. And now people ask me to teach them how to decorate with balloons. So what I do is I give like a beginner's class where I teach people from the beginning, people that doesn't know anything about balloons, teach them the certain way that you have to inflate the balloons. There's a certain way that you have to tie the balloon so the actual the air actually doesn't go out. There's a way to get the proper size of the balloon so the decoration actually would look nice and professional. So there's many little details about the balloon industry that it's not just blowing up balloons. So I started teaching, and I teach a class almost once every three months from the beginners and advanced. That's a nice additional revenue stream for you then, too. Yes, it is. It's something that just happened. I wasn't planning on doing it, but it was there, and I took it, and it's been good. I hear that so often. You weren't even thinking that you would teach, but an opportunity presented itself, and you grabbed onto it. You never know when that's going to happen, but if you come to your business with an attitude of being open and seeing what else is out there, it can evolve from one thing to another. In this case, you're just adding on top of what you're doing, but really smart because multiple streams of revenue help secure your business too. Yes, so. yes, they do. All right, so we are going to go now, Maria, into our reflection section. This is a look at you and some other things about you that have helped you to be successful. Mm-hmm. If you were to think of one natural trait that you have that's helped you to progress to where you are, what would that be? That would be craft. I love to do all kind of crafts. You know, I, since I was a little girl, I love to work with my hands. And every craft that I saw at the stores, I wanted to do it. I wanted to try it. Scrapbooking, I've been doing floral arrangements. I've been doing, I mean, you name it. I have worked with almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of learned how to crochet, how to knit, how to do a little Christmas decorations with a felt. I don't know, everything. I can't even think about it right now because I have a whole section of craft in my house. I used to have a room, but we moved to a smaller place, so that's kind of uh, difficult for me. If you're a crafter, uh, the craft supplies can get out of control very quickly. Especially (laughs) when you go to Michael's and they have these great sales. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) All right. So I think that because I love craft so much, that's something that it helped me. I love to work with my hands. A lot of crafters don't really recognize and appreciate that not everyone can do that. Not everybody can (laughs) work with their hands and create something beautiful. So if you have that talent and then you also have that passion, you're lucky. Yeah, a lot of people tell me, you have so much patience to do that. I can't. I'm like, you have to love what you do. If you don't love what you do, you won't be able to do it. It takes patience to do something. You know, you put your heart, you put your soul into it. And that's the way it's supposed to be when you love something. Absolutely. (laughs) And I love that. (laughs) That's awesome. Okay. So what tool do you use regularly in your business or in your personal life to create balance? Is there something you call upon that keeps you all organized and together? I have a book that I read that it helps me a lot. Sometimes there's so many things going in my life and uh, I'm a grandmother. I have my daughters that still live at home. Right now I'm taking care of my mother. This is something new for me. Then I have to take care of my home. They have to take care of my business. You know, sometimes it gets to be a lot Mm -hmm. to me. So there's this book that I read. It's called I Declare. It's by Joe Austin. And this book, I read it every month. It's my book forever. 
it has 31 decorations of what you want for your life. And it declares, you know, things like, are you talks about your finances, your outlooks of overcoming obstacles. It talks about health, your family, decisions, everything about it, you know, about putting actions behind my faith and not be passive. And this book talks about all the stuff, you know, every day says something different. Like one day it talks about finding peace in your life. And it talks and it gives you a little reflection about, you know, you have to take it easy. Don't don't overthink it. Pray about it. Put it in God's hands. Somebody this talks about decisions. What decisions am I going to mm-hmm. take? Am I going to do everything at the, at the same time? I teach you, you know, to see what is important and leave what is not aside. It talks about finances. This book has helped me a lot because it helps me find calm and peacefulness. And I just love to read this book. Wonderful. It's called I Declare. Yes, it's called I Declare. It's by a Christian pastor and he's a writer, a book writer. His name is Joel Austin. Okay, perfect. It's a great book. Like I said, I read it every month because every month is something different, even though it's the same things in the book. But when you go into something, I can go back to my book and I read about, let's say, if I don't know about what I'm thinking, it has a, it has a chapter about all your thoughts that comes through your mind and how you can handle with it and take it easy and peacefulness. Each month you might be encountering different challenges too. So the next time you run into that declaration, it might apply to your life differently. You see it differently just because, of, yeah, because you your see- situation keeps changing. Yeah, that's what somebody told me. They're like, you always read that book, Leo, because, you know, every day there's something new. Right. Even though it was yesterday, maybe it was today the same problem, but you see it in a different way. You always, you know, there's something new. Every day there's something new that's going on in your life. To me, this book has helped me a lot. Wonderful. Okay, Gift Biz <laughs> listeners, just as you're listening to the podcast today, you can also listen to audiobooks with ease since we've been talking about books. I've teamed up with Audible and you can get an audiobook for free on me. All you need to do is go to giftbizbook.com and make a selection. Okay, Maria, I now invite you to dare to dream. I'd like to present you with a virtual gift. It's a magical box with balloons on top, containing unlimited possibilities for your future. This is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it in our presence. What is inside your box? It's my own store. (laughs) Oh, okay. Tell us about this. Your own store. Yes. Is it a retail shop? No, it's a balloon store. (laughs) It's a balloon store. (laughs) It's a balloon decorating services. My dream is to have a business that I can really do what I love with no, no, no limitations of space. Because since this is a home base, it's a small place where I have to do my things. But if I have my own place, my own store, I have all the space that I need to do all these creations that are in my mind that I cannot do it because of the space. I know this man, his name is David Mahoney and he's in Texas. He's a very successful business. And he has a lot of employers and a lot of jobs. And he's my inspiration. I really admire this man because he's a humble man. And he's always ready to help. And every time that I come through something that I need to do and I don't know how to do it, he talks to me and he tells me, you know what, Mireya? You can do it this way. You can do it that way. But because he owns a big place, he can do everything that he tells me to do. And I can't. And I just say, oh, thank you. So when I, but I know the temperature allows it, I'll do it in my yard like uh, building frames for a big arch or big frames for a uh, sculpture or something. So if I have my own store, my own place, that's my dream, to have a place where I can actually go, like a little warehouse. You know, I have all my tools, all my materials, everything in order that I don't have to be going through boxes and looking here and there. (laughs) Well, that sounds like a great dream and a great goal, and I certainly hope that that comes true for you in the future, for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) So if there were one place that our listeners would like to link up with you and see some of your balloons and possibly hire you for an event if they're here locally in Chicago, what would that single place be? Where should they go and look at your balloon designs? The main page I would recommend would be Facebook. Okay, and a business page, right? (laughs) Yes, my business page. That will be round like me, 
Balloon Events. I also have a website, which is roundlikeme.dpweb.com. And Gift Biz listeners, you know there'll be a show notes page connected with this episode. So if you are out and about and not able to write down any of that information, you can always access the show notes page and there will be links there so that you will be able to get in touch with Maria if you, for some reason, just can't capture the information right now. All right, Maria, thank you so much. I really appreciate your taking the time and being with us today and sharing the story. And I really like that we got into this whole concept of the imposter syndrome because (laughs) it is real. You are a survivor of the syndrome, right? You overcame it because you did not listen to those messages that your mind kept telling yourself. And it's really, it's a really, really important message. So I appreciate that you shared that. And I am so looking forward to the success that you have. And hopefully one day you are going to be telling me, oh, I have a shop. Let me tell you how you can come and visit me. So that would be, (laughs) that would be our wish for you. And Maria, may your candle always burn bright. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Where are you in your business building journey? Whether you're just starting out or already running a business and you want to know your setup for success, find out by taking the gift biz quiz. Access the quiz from your computer at bit.ly slash gift biz quiz or from your phone by texting gift biz quiz to 44222. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information. After you listen to the show, if you like what you're hearing, make sure to jump over and subscribe to the show on iTunes. That way you'll automatically get the newest episodes when they go live. And thank you to those who have already left a rating and review. By subscribing, rating, and reviewing, you help to increase the visibility of Gift Biz Unwrapped. It's a great way to pay it forward to help others with their entrepreneurial journey as well.